before we start the video, I would like to go into a couple of things that may have been misunderstood. I'm not sure when you watch the video through again. Uh, basically, it is this glyph here. Um, it's half five in the morning. I'm tired. Um, if you are doing a fight where healing is intensive, you can get good value out of this, good value out of this. Um, you may want to prioritize something like that over that. For example, the one rage is not immensely significant. Obviously, it's a very, very minor increase on damage, but something like this on Gorefiend, something like this on Gorefiend is pretty game-breaking. Um, and whereas a lot of the time, unless it's on a fight with, like, Per McCleave, then you want to be using one of these more utility glyphs. Um, which is not to say this glyph is bad, it's really good, but some of the things that you can get out of these two glyphs here are really, really cool. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about, um, I didn't mention it in my video because it's half five, I'm tired, but any fights with interrupts, you want to use Glyph of Rude Interruption. You want to snipe that interrupt, you want to get yourself first in rotation. For example, uh, I make all the interrupt rotations that we do in my guild and I will put warriors first because I know they get the most out of it and you shout at your range DPS if they snipe your interrupt because well read it <laughs> any fight with interrupts take this glyph enjoy the video hello uh, welcome to this guide uh, on the bosses in Hellfire Citadel and what specs you want to play for them uh, I'm going to be going into all sorts of details like talents glyphs and yeah, most important of all specs and sort of little things that you uh, can do to optimize each fight. So to start with, uh, we're going to look at the Hellfire Assault. Now, as I'm sure all of you are aware, this fight is joke fight. It's very easy. Uh, you're going to be wanting to play Fury for it, obviously. Uh, you're going to be wanting to take uh, the usual stuff like Sudden Death and Major Regen. You're going to want Dragon's Roar. You're going to want Bladestorm, and you're going to want Ravager. You want to go all out on your AoE. Um, even in Mythic, it's like getting to the stage now where it doesn't really matter. Uh, Glyph-wise, you can either use Glyph of Bullrush, or you can use... Uh, where is it? You can you can use Wind, of Thun Wind, uh, Wind and Thunder if you want, uh, or you can use... I always forget what this one's called. Um... Oh yeah, it's down there because of uh, arm sweat. You can use uh, Glyph of Raging Blow. Uh, you probably want to keep in Rage Speed and obviously an Ending Rage for it. Uh, but yeah, you're probably not going to be wanting too much detail on that. But on that boss, I would probably sacrifice World Breakers and go for uh, Unending Hunger and uh, the Felcleave Trinket. Um, I don't have the Felburn Trinket yet, but um, I would probably use uh, Felburn instead of uh, this one. Moving on, we have the Iron Reaver. This too is a Fury fight. Uh, it's much more single target orientated. For this fight, I would take Siegebreaker, Avatar, and Stormbolt. Um, Glyphwise, you're going to be going for Bullrush, I think, because you're going to be charging around a fair bit. Uh, even when he's blitzing, you can utilize mid blitz. Uh, if you play well enough to get that uh, charge in there and then just hero leap back to him to get back on the boss as soon as possible. Um, it's worth also noting as well that if you are using the World Breakers Resolve uh, Trinket, obviously that's different for Fury, uh, if you let him do his first charge and then charge him midway back, try and get an auto attack on him because you'll keep the stacks of your trinket and that will be quite considerable as we all know how good it is for fury um okay moving on to cormrock for this fight you want to be playing fury i'm sure i will say this uh many times in the video uh there's this little thing called uh, uh, arms and there's also bladestorm 
look at this. Basically, it does absolutely nothing to Blade Storm. And when you're playing arms, you want to go full out mastery, and you will be on the later bosses. So, uh, you want to be playing Fury for this boss. For this fight, I would pick Dragon's Roar, I would pick Bladestorm, and I would pick Ravager. I'm not going to go into these little towns here because they're fairly obvious. Uh, Glyph-wise, you can pretty just run, pretty much just run as is. You're not going to be whirlwinding quite so much. <clears throat> Excuse me, um, but the Ravager, what you want to do is pre-cast it before the hands come. And yeah, you're going to be doing some pretty sick damage with that. Moving on to Hellfire How Council. This fight is 100% uh, an arms fight. Glyphwise for this, you want to be using... I would say Glyph of Mortal Strike. Glyph of Unending Rage and Glyph of Bullrush. Glyph of Bullrush is quite useful because in sort of slight downtime you can charge out uh, Rend, Deer, and this is this is once Blood Ball is dead and you've just got the two left. You can Rend, Deer, and charge back or leap back or whatever you want to do. And then you can get more Mortal Strike procs. Uh, Talent-wise, you want to take AM. Um... This is quite dependent on your kind of setup. Uh, it's kind of RNG whether it's going to work well or not because basically you the, the perfect scenario is you open on Blood Ball, obviously you get him down and at about 15% if you can expend as much rage as possible um, then you'll get this back at around about 15 to 20 percent that would be the ideal scenario but in recent kills i've done at the moment it hasn't quite worked out that way so i'm not getting that extra wreck so i probably would take ravager in that situation um you want to take bloodbath and you want to take dragon's roar one little tip i will give if you are going to use am and you're cutting it fine don't use dragon's roar throughout the burning of uh, blood boil because you want to expend as much rage as possible to get full value out of that um, recklessness in the end there okay we are now going to look at Killrog Deadeye this uh, like you want to play Fury because if you're going to be sent in uh, you want to be able to get 20 stacks of the buff and arms AoE is terrible even though it may seem like a quite an obvious arms fight for going inside unless you're with something like a combat rogue or warlock you're going to be wanting to like like the buff if you can get 20 stacks as arms near the execute kudos to you um but you're going to be pretty much carried in there um and you're not going to be taking blade storm because it's not going to be good enough in there damage wise because that thing again mastery um but yeah, like from my point of view, if you're going in and you're going to be in for the execute, you want to play Fury because you want those 20 stacks. Like if you go in as arms and get 10 stacks, you will do more damage as Fury getting 20 stacks like any day. For that fight as Fury, I would pick Bladestorm, Ravager and Dragonzor. Make sure you have Ravager, Bladestorm. A dragon's or as well as a recklessness for going inside don't pop it straight away because you need to save it for when more things come try and kill a couple first then you get a couple of stacks and then everything else is just gonna blow up with your ravager and your wreck um, glyph wise again pretty much go as is okay now we're moving on to Gorefiend. Um you want to be playing, uh, I'd say Fury on Heroic, but Arms 100% on Mythic. Uh, it's it's very good on Mythic because you can keep Ren ticking on the boss. Um, and obviously with this little talent here, you'll be gaining all the rage. And if you're going to be the person in charge of breaking people out, which you probably should be, your rage regen is going to be good enough. Um, and you're going to be fairly comfortable at breaking people out in time 
as well as getting immensely good cleave on the um, tank ad that comes out of the uh, belly. Um, that said, uh, arms 20% during Feast of Souls, you will absolutely destroy, uh, especially if you have your legendary ring, which I don't. I have been extremely unlucky and only have 25 at this moment in time. Um, but yeah, basically arms on that fight is pretty much 100% uh, guaranteed. Talent wise, uh, I would say AM, Bloodbath or Avatar doesn't matter too much in this fight because Avatar uh, does more damage in that one minute burst than Bloodbath will. But Bloodbath is quite good over the fight if you need the damage in places. Uh, Dragon's War is obviously good for going inside. Uh, well, if you're going to be playing Fury on heroic mode, you're going to be one to run um, AM or Siege Breaker, depending on the length of the fight, I'd say. Probably Siege Breaker, uh, Avatar, Dragon's War. You could almost play with Bladestorm if you're quite slow at killing stuff, but I wouldn't recommend it at all. Moving on to Shadow Lord Iskar. Now, uh, I'm going to explain something now that might seem quite strange. This seems like an obvious theory fight, you know, all that AoE and stuff. But the little adds don't do anything, right? They will get cleaved down with everyone else's passive cleave and whatnot. Um, and I think... Uh, it's much more valuable to play arms on this fight because the dam y you're going to be p wanting to bank your Rex anyway, so you probably wouldn't use it on the pull unless you have double wild uh, blood surge procs on the pull to get it off cooldown for the intermission. Um, so y you can play Fury and you can just do loads of pad damage to the adds and not kill everything quick enough. Or you can rend up a couple of mobs and smack the living daylights out of prior targets with mortal strikes, fam. Uh, and sweeping strikes. So, uh, it's much more valuable on that one. And, uh, as well as the last 20% being quite a DPS check. Like, arms will just push through there on the execute quite comfortably. Um, Talent-wise, for that fight, you will want to run Ravager, Bloodbath, Dragon's Roar. And glyph wise, you can probably you can go with Bullrush because Chakrams you might be charging out a fair bit. Like this glyph here, I think is really good, um, purely and simply because you will have 100% uptime on it with the uh, four p uh, two and four piece tier 18. Uh, this is a common kind of misconception as a really OP glyph. It doesn't actually do that much. Um, Especially on the fights that you're going to be playing arms, you're going to have rend up on a lot of stuff. Um, the rage you get is kind of minimal, really. And on those moments of single targets, you won't have sweeping strikes up anyway, so you won't get, even get benefit from it. So rage will still be a consideration there. Moving on, we have Socrathar. This is, in my opinion, a fury fight. Because, well, purely and simply the boss goes immune when the Dominators come, so you can't cleave off them. And the other adds don't live long enough for you to even get any damage up on them. So essentially, it's single target, and on single target, Fury wins out. Um, I'm not sure if this is still the case. Uh, might have wanted to check this over tonight, but the Construct... Uh, Certainly on the PTR in the first couple of weeks on Heroic, it was immune to Siege Breaker. So, you want to kind of either hold back on that one or pick uh, AM or Ravager. Um, probably AM, I'd say. You also want to pick Avatar and Dragon's Roar or Stormbolt. It's entirely up to you. Um, Dragon's Roar, was, the boss was also immune to the damage on uh, the first couple of weeks of um, Heroic. I say the first couple of weeks, we're on like week three. Um, 
so yeah, you might want to just check that one out before. So, arms on that boss is pretty... I wouldn't play it myself. Uh, did I do glyphs? I did not do glyphs. Glyphs, you can probably... Like, Fury's quite set in stone. You can pretty much just go like that. That should be more than fine. Um... Oh, I didn't do Glyphs of Gorefiend. Okay, Arms, Glyphs of Gorefiend. Very important. Uh, this is pretty good, I'd say. If you want to be using that. Uh, it's really good regen inside the Feast, especially at Execute when your healers are going to be potentially struggling for mana. And obviously this Glyph here uh, gives you uh, much more healing, which is really good. And the mandatory 20 Rage. Moving on to Zulharak. This is an Arms fight. Contrary to what I was playing on Heroic, I didn't have my tier. Um, essentially, if you don't have your tier, every single fight in this space is a Fury fight. Um, Zulharak is... Oh, it's it's such an arms fight. It's amazing. Um, because you can keep rend on just about everything that spawns. Um... You will get those annoying times when you pop CS, you pop Bloodbath, and then you will get the Fell Surge debuff, and you will have to move out. It's annoying, but it happens, so just deal with it. Um, one thing you probably want to try and do as well is poach as many executes you can on the little imps. Uh, the little imps are basically, obviously they got to die, so we're looking at talent-wise now. You still want to be taking Bloodbath. You probably want to take Ravager as well. But Bloodbath over Bladestorm. Because Bladestorm, again, doesn't do that much damage as arms. But Bloodbath is, Bloodbath is much more significant. And you want to take Dragon's War or Shockwave on that boss. Uh, Glyph-wise, you can pretty much take this one, this one, this one. Or Bull Rush, whatever. It's um, not so important, that boss. This one's uh, not quite so good on that boss in my opinion <coughs> okay so we're now moving on to tyrant valari oh and guess what another arms fight why because the two target cleave is absolutely wonderful on this fight um the execute sweeping strikes you can get on the big ads uh, really cool damage on the boss uh and most important of all when the boss hits like 20 percent she's taking a lot of increased damage so your executes will hit like a truck and you want to be saving everything for that uh what you want to be playing on that one is i would say ravager bloodbath dragons raw like taste for blood is mandatory as well as arms for arms uh I think Rallying Cry might be relatively useful on that one. Just trying to think now. Um, Sweeping Strikes again doesn't really do anything because you're going to be getting enough rage with TFB. Uh, Mortal Strike I would use 100%. Winner Thunder's not that good. Yeah, pretty much as is, I would say, for that one. Now we are moving on to Manoroth. At first glance, and certainly on Heroic at lower gear levels i would say this is a fury fight purely and simply because the imps will live longer you can do some nice blade storm damage as us warriors like to do uh however this weekend um i did a normal kill of it and a heroic kill of it on the heroic kill my percentage of blade storm damage was insanely low purely because the adds melt like butter in a fucking oven it's and like you know how sucky it is when that happens so we went and did normal i did arms and i did surprisingly a sick amount of dps short of rending up all the infernals before they start pulsing it's actually really freaking strong um because you can just rend everything up uh, and, you know, you do the mortal strikes, sweeping strikes, bullshit. And on mythic difficulty, you have the Doom Lord thing spawn uh, throughout the fight, so you're going to be able to get really good cleave on that. Uh, Talent-wise, let's have a look. Uh, glyphs here. Either as is, you can use bull rush, you can use sweeping strikes. Uh, Glyphwise, Bloodbath, because Bladestorm sucks. Uh, 
You can use Ravager depending on how long the fight's going to take you. You can use AM. Ravager's quite nice damage on the Infernals and combat with Bloodbath. It's just a really cool combo. Uh, Dragon's War, obviously. Um, and finally, moving on to Archimand. I will cover like normal and heroic on this one. Mythic, uh, well, I'm not on him yet, so... But from, from what I know so far, I will be playing arms on that boss. Um, and at the time of which we kill it, uh, you'll see what I play anyway. So, for uh, normal and heroic then, if you are running the tier 17 um, piece, you want to be playing Fury. That's 100% for sure. Uh, Talent-wise, you're going to be running Bladestorm, Ravager, the Dragon's Roar. Glyph-wise, you are going to be wanting... Hmm... Bull Rush is good, because you can charge the Doomfires and then not get hit by anything. Uh, those three, as is, you'll be fine. You'll be set for that. Uh, and then, if you have your wonderful... Um, tier 18 4 piece you are going to be wanting to play arms on that boss because it's amazing the cleave you can get off the adds is wonderful the execute damage on the boss from doom fires from doom guards is it's wonderful and in the burn phase at the end you can keep rend on the boss rend up uh, as many infernals as you can uh, you should be a good utility player and taunt an infernal out of the raid if it is on top of each, uh, on top of another infernal. And with all those rends up, you can spam mortal strike until your fingers fall off. Um, talent wise for that boss, again, you probably want to be running bloodbath, ravager, and dragon's roar. Glyph wise. You can go as is, you can use Bull Rush. Bull Rush we talked about is good for Fury because you can charge the Doom Fires. That pretty much wraps up what spec you're going to be playing on what boss. It appears we have some FPS luck here. Um, I hope you've all been enjoying Hellfire Citadel as much as I have. If you have any questions or anything that you don't agree with, anything that you have tried out yourself and agree with, feel free to comment uh, in the video below. Thank you for watching.